This is an Udo Puko. Very creative design on the handle. Not sure if Udo originated this, but he's definitely the first guy that I've seen to use it. And he does some relatively imaginative think things with paracord and epoxy for handles. Uh, Mick Strider was one of the ones who popularized paracord grips. And paracord plus epoxy is very common in Japanese style handles. But this is actually a solid handle. You can't actually feel the paracord. A while ago, I did a corrosion resistance check using this knife as the baseline because it's O1 and it has almost no corrosion resistance. So what I did was I covered a number of knives in table salt, just poured it right on them, completely covered them. Saturated it with water, wrapped it with a napkin, saturated that, and left it for 12 hours overnight. And I compared the amount of damage that was done to this knife, which is an O1, this knife, which is a spider Spyderco Temperance and VG10, This knife, which is from Mike Gavco and S125V, Powder Metallurgy Steel, and this one, which is an S110V knife from RJ Merton. I did this because I was rather curious if the corrosion resistance of S110 and S125V was significantly different than VG10. And of course, O1 was used just as a baseline reference point. Now the O1 blade was completely covered in with uh, both orange and black oxide, as you would expect. Cleans off with a little bit of abrasion. The interesting thing, maybe, to some people, is that there was really no difference between the small amount of orange rust that formed on the spider coat temperance as to what formed on Mike's S125 V knife as to what formed on the S110 V modulator from RJ Merton. Now, if you look at the data sheets from Crucible on these steels. They elevate the corrosion resistance of S110V to extremely high levels and even S125V is quite high. Here's the point that you really need to keep in mind and this should be kind of obvious. A data sheet is a set of promotional material made by the company that's making the thing and is trying to sell it. You should never use that as a serious point of comparison. And it's a ridiculous thing to actually do. Can you imagine going into a car dealership and saying, oh yeah, you make this type of uh, car. What about the guys in the other lot that make this type of car? Is your car really better than theirs? What do you expect the salesman to say when he's getting a direct commission on the cars that he's selling? No one would do that because anyone with even a bit of common sense would realize that's not really an unbiased source. Similarly, you look at data sheets to give you a general idea about the steel. However, the comparisons that they make are specifically geared to enhance the relative performance of what they're trying to sell. And when you don't take this into account and you make blind judgments on the data that they present, you get seriously erroneous conclusions, such as the corrosion resistance. One of the things that they do, for example, is they'll take a steel like this, which is S110V, 
When they harden it, they soak it before the quench at a very high temperature. That puts a tremendous amount of the chromium into the steel, takes it out of the carbides and puts it into the steel. That's where it makes the steel corrosion resistant. Then, when they want to compare it against another steel, such as 440C or VG10, when they take this one though, they only heat it to a very, very low temperature before they quench it. Thus, very little of the chromium goes into the steel. The steel ends up having a very low corrosion resistance, and then they say, look, see how much more corrosion resistant our steel is? But you're not really seeing the two steels compared directly. You're seeing the massive effect that heat treatment can make, but they don't tell you that in a data sheet, nor should you expect them to, because again, that's from the salesman trying to sell you something. If you actually want to understand about the steels themselves, you have to look at the actual materials data. That comes from the actual standards that are published, it comes from the peer-reviewed articles, and you can also find some of it in the patent data. That's where you need to look for actual uh, performance data. The other way that they get you, and this has fooled a tremendous amount of people, is that they compare steels uh, for wear resistance usually, and they quote the hardness. And you'll see, for example, S110V at some hardness and S110V at another hardness, and they can be maybe two Rockwell points apart. But the wear resistance is tremendously different. People then conclude, well, it must be the hardness that's causing it. Well, that's what they have listed. Again, that's not what's actually causing it. If you trace back, sometimes you can find this data in the patents, what they're actually comparing is one steel which has been hardened to produce a very high martensite percentage and the other steel which has an extremely high percentage of retained austenite which is very soft and easy to grind so of course the wear resistance is relatively low and often that becomes because they're comparing a steel with a high temper which doesn't need a cryo to a low temperature which does need a cryo but they don't cryo either one of them so of course the steel with high tempers versus the steel with low tempers, the high temper shows a much greater wear resistance because again they haven't done a cryo treatment which is critical on low tempering. And that's also why people often conclude that high tempers are much better because again they're looking at data sheets and seeing this kind of difference and they're not really understanding that it's a very unequal comparison. You need to compare high and low tempers when both were done optimally. So again, the main point of all this is when you're looking at data sheets, remember, this is promotional material made by a salesman to sell you the product. If this wasn't about knives and it was about any other product, you would never take it seriously at all. If you open up a flyer which is advertising products that are on sale at some store and the next week, you would never even imagine looking at that flyer and think, oh, well, that has to be the truth. I mean, why else would they say it? You would recognize it as promotional material. That's all the data sheets are. So again, a simple check on corrosion resistance of S110V, S125V, VG10, with a 12-hour, very simple, saturated soak in salt water, all of them showed uh, orange oxidization forming on the blade, none of them showed heavy pitting, and none of them showed heavy coverage. All of this, of course, is affected by the finish of the blade, it's affected by the surface area of the blade, and a number of other factors, but a basic check just shows you that there's not that much significant difference from one steel to the other because you can't even pick them apart from one blade to the other, but there's a tremendous difference if you compare any of them, of course, to something like O1.